Morning, everyone. I think I'm a bit like Ellie, and I think because I'm out in the veil, my camera is a bit laggy. So apologies if this seems a bit strange. Anyway, so to kind of pick up from where Andrew was, the mechanisms of how we can work together once we've identified relationship is really what Tobias and I are going to talk about today. Um, so I've been uh, with the university six years and I came from business prior to that and before that I was a lecturer at Nottingham. So I'm kind of quite skilled in the art of finding funding. Um, when I worked in a private business, what I actually did was set up academic collaborations with our business to achieve our R&D objectives. So I've got a little bit of experience about what we're going to talk about today, but uh, we, I'm a Afraid we do have a couple of slides. Um, we're going to try and not make it death by PowerPoint. So we've got myself and Tobias talking through this. So um, I'm going to hand over to Tobias for him to introduce himself and then we'll move on to the next slide. Hi, so I'm a Business Innovation Fellow with the Leicester Innovation Hub and innovating your income streams is part of what I do. So um, uh, I'll be talking a little bit about that. Thanks, Tobias. Let's see if we can get onto the first slide. So um, probably everybody in the audience, and I'm trying not to pe teach people to suck <laughs> eggs, knows that the funding landscape is really blinking complicated, or it can seem complicated if you're not sure, you know, what you're doing and what you want to do. And this actually, this slide comes from a very recently published government roadmap for R&D spending. And, and these slides will be available after the event and also we'll add some more detail in so people can use them um, as and when required. But the thing is, because about this day, we've kind of got access to some resources that might not be um, accessible to yourself if you're looking for funding. So we've got lots of sort of databases and things that we can use to access funding. But coming back to what the landscape looks like is it's, it's quite complicated. Um, so we're here to kind of help chart that way, your way through that. But I think the first question you have to ask um, is, do I really need money? And I know everybody wants to say, yes, I really need money. But actually, it depends, I think, really on what you're trying to do. And what you're trying to do is probably depends then on where you go and look for the money. Because if you're in a really sort of R&D intensive kind of industry, and my background is life science, and that's that's kind of where I, I always want to stay, um, you know, to get a med tech device to market, you're looking at about 30 million. And a drug's a billion because of the attrition rate. But, you know, it's, it's really what you want to go and find money wise really depends on what you, you know, what you want to spend that money on. You know, how much do you want? Let's be realistic here. Is it, you know, 30,000 to do a little bit of testing or is it 30 million to get a medical device to market? Also, what's this innovation or R&D piece going to do for the business? So you've really kind of got to have a quite a clear view of where you want to get to and what's it going to deliver. And then what's your, your exit strategy around about that? So I've worked with lots of companies who've got medical devices to a certain point and then, you know, they, they absolutely want to be acquired by a larger company. That's their business model. So for them to be able to get to that position, they want to make sure they've, you know, very limited amount of debt to make this much more attractive kind of project. So there's different types of money and I'm going to hand over to Tobias here to talk through some of the, the different types that you might want to consider. Yeah, thank you. So if you're, if you're looking for R&D investment to develop and innovate new products and processes, it, it's quite likely that you've come up with something or have got something that um, you know an end customer is going to like. So if you've got that starting point of you know that customers are going to like it. It absolutely follows that funders and investors are going to like it too. So I'm sure you all know these different types of finance that are available. Um, and I'm just going to take a bit of spin on these. We're talking about um, innovative approaches. So gifts um, up to £3,000 can be given to you um, tax free. Um, so that is that is something that people often ignore. There's a, a local company that I heard speak around 10 years ago. Um, it's called Zico in Colville, and they uh, um, told an audience, a leadership audience, that they funded their business on uh, loan using loan notes. So essentially having gifts from people. 
and they polish the lenses that have taken photographs of footprints on the moon. So a space connection there as well. A lot of people say I don't I don't know well wealthy people, but of course nowadays with the internet we do know everybody globally, and um, gifts can also be um, provided by the crowd. You can go to the crowd for gifts, and there's crowdfunding platforms, uh, which you can have both a pre-order for um, your product um, through a, an online crowdfunding platform, or you can find equity investors through the crowd as well. And there's something very interesting about how um, crowdfunding works, which is that often the um, the the gifts or the equity is, is incentivized. So there are some very positive approaches of saying, um, yes, uh, we want to make this product. Um, uh, and if you pay us 30 pounds now, as soon you know, when we have a uh, 200 of you, we will be able to make our first batch of products and people can be the the first, the early adopter, the, you know, your first buyers. Also, you can incentivize those further. You can say, well, you know, if you, if you give us a uh, hundred pounds, you can have uh, your name on our website. And if you give us 500 pounds, then you can come to our launch party. So there's opportunities to make getting money from people fun. Um, you can uh, incentivize it and um, give people a chance to to interact with you and the company and make it a bit of an experience. And we know that, you know, we know that people like these sorts of things. We know that people do like to, to gamble. So why not use some innovative approaches to um, let people take a bit of risk and give some money to you? Mm -hmm. I'll hand back to Lucy. Thanks, Tobias. So one thing that you might have heard about in the region is the Midlands Engine Investment Fund and they've actually been going great guns now for the past two years and at the bottom of the slide there's a link to their, their latest video where they talk about the companies they've funded, they have case studies and actually it, it's a really good kind of five minute video, I would recommend going to look at it. But what they've shown is that they, because they work with investment fund managers, um, and various other sources, funding angels, etc., venture capital. What they do is they actually find it, they're able to sort of finance a full range of businesses. Um, so not just the really sort of big innovation heavy type business, but smaller businesses or businesses who are looking to do something quite different with their business model. Um, and they've got these different ways of doing that. So they've got a proof of concept fund. They've got um, equity finance debt finance and small business loans. So I'd recommend if you know, you're know you starting to think about, well, let's start to explore what's out there. Definitely go and have a look at the Midlands Engine Investment Fund website. It's really quite informative. There's other sources of business grants. Um, the Let Business Gateway, go and have a look at their website. There's lots of things on there that you might find very useful as well. Uh, and again, those are sort of different types of, of grants. However, coming to the bit that I get excited about because I am quite sad is um, really looking at about setting up kind of grant funding, working collaboratively with universities and other partners to really fund something that's going to make a real difference. And certainly within the medical field, that's why I get very excited. And really, where are you going to look for that grant funding depends often on what people call a technology readiness level of your product. And I'm sure, again, that you know the majority of the audience are really aware of, of what that means. But it really is, it's kind of saying there's different funding mechanisms depending on where you are in that sort of research and innovation kind of life cycle. So if you're looking to do something really basic and fundamental, because that's kind of the absolute hinge that will allow you then to move into developing a new product, working with um, a university such as Leicester or somebody who's a real expert in that area will allow you to be able to apply for funding. And as you can see underneath the sort of basic and applied research, there's different types of, of government funder. Of, um, and we'll talk through those in a minute on the next slide. If it's something that actually you're looking to um, do some translational development, there's then large sources of funding, you need a couple of million out of the, the biomedical catalyst or um, looking at sort of some of the innovate style funding. 
So there's lots of different things and different pieces of funding that you would want to think and put together when you're thinking about, well, what's my pathway to product? And actually, you know, come in and talk to us. We can kind of help you map that out. And the other thing that's quite important to sort of take into consideration is kind of success rate of some of these funding streams. So in the university, we reckon we've probably got about a 30% success rate when we apply to a, a grant awarding body through UKRI. Now, we've got Cameron uh, in the room, so to speak. Um, but one of the things about Innovate, it's quite over heavily subscribed for some of their things such as smart grants, etc. So, you know, you're looking possibly at about 10% sort of success rate. So I think it would be quite aware. Pitfalls for applying for funding, but also being realistic about your chances of success, especially when you think about the amount of work that goes into developing a grant application. Um, and we've got an Innovate News flash on the bottom that actually they've got continui continuity loans have just come out and uh, that's open till the 30th of January. So that if you're thinking about how am I going to get this last little bit of innovation funded, it's something definitely to look at. So UKRI, that's what was known as our research councils, are really where the majority of the sort of large collaborative amounts of funding come from. But it's not the only place. Um, and you can actually go and search that quite easily. They've got a, a, a new tool on their website so you can have a look at what funding is open. We also have access to other tools called Research Professional, which allows us to look at much more varied sources of funding. So, you know, one of the first things I would say is once you're kind of trying to think about how much money you think you'll need, go and have a quick look, have a look at UKRI and then come and talk to us because there are other things out there that we've got access to, to that kind of brings all these funding things into the same place. And we're kind of going to move on to probably the last bit in our talk now and we've got Cameron and Benoit who are our KTP experts and we'll, we'll actually ask Cameron a couple of difficult questions around about KTPs. But KTPs is one of the Innovate grant funding um, routes that's actually still got a very high success rate and it allows you to basically transfer knowledge between a university and an industrial partner using um, a recent graduate and actually it can cover up to about 67 percent of the project costs so it's quite a good scheme if you're thinking about well we need to bring some ai into our business how might we do that actually we've heard from ivan and the team earlier about the level of expertise we've got there. So maybe having a KTP associate between Ivan's team and yourself might be a good way of bringing some AI expertise into the business. So I'm going to stop there because I'm aware that we're kind of really pushing past our time. But I'm going to ask Cameron if he'd like to reveal himself on the camera, please. I am on the camera. Oh, I can't see you. Sorry. Um, so Cameron, what would you say if you if you're a company out there who's um, kind of thinking about this KTP route? What do you think assessors might be looking for on a, a quality application? OK, um, what I'd say there is is basically when it comes to whether it's KTP or whether it's uh, Innovate UK calls. And let's not forget that Innovate UK distributes over a billion pounds a year to support funding initiatives and mechanisms across the UK. Yeah, OK. You know, there's a lot of energy that goes into that application and, and, and looking at what you brought before, which was a TRL level, lots of partnerships and applications and collaborations and companies, what they'll focus their energy on is the idea, the stages one and two, basically. Then they'll put a little bit more detail in, in maybe, you know, stages three to sort of six, seven, which is really about how to deliver on that idea. Yeah. OK. And what tends to happen is the commercialization stage, which is eight and nine, tends to become an afterthought yeah okay now interestingly in innovate uk funds innovation that can demonstrate it gets to the market basically it doesn't fund an idea it doesn't fund invention it funds innovation and and if you look at the of innovation the do the translation of innovation it's it's inventing you know translating an idea or a product or service that makes money that satisfies market need at, at, at an acceptable cost and that's the bit that we find is always missing from applications so i would turn it on its head and say focus on the commercialization aspects focus on your value proposition focus on your route to market 
demonstrate that you know what you're talking about, even better, demonstrate that the market's interested in your product or your service, basically, if you can get that validation from them, basically. That's a strong application. Thanks, Cameron, that's great. Um, does anybody have any questions in the audience or should we just maybe take them in the breakout rooms if we're uh, getting a bit pushed from time for time? I don't see any questions having come through on the chat. Um, so I think I will hand back to Ayo. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Sorry, I didn't realize you are supposed to hand over back to me, but that's great. <laughs> so I'm going to be. Um, we are going to be moving to our breakout rooms. But I've discovered that um, a few of us are signed up with devices that I may not be able to assign to a room. So if if you're not if, if I'm not able to assign you to a room, it could possibly be because you are joining from maybe your mobile phone or something. <laughs> if it's possible for you to join from a laptop or something else, uh, rejoin the meeting, then I'll be able to assign you to a room. So thank you, everybody, and then um, off you go. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, is that working? OK, great, I think it works. Hello, Ranjita, can you hear me? Hello? Hello? Okay. Hello, Ash. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. How are you? Okay, great. Please, can we turn on our video so that we can get to see each other? Thank you very much. Yeah. Ah, so what is happening here is that I've not been able to assign us to a room. But I think it's brilliant that Rajinda is here. So I would like to Rajinda lead this conversation. I've just noticed that we have not been able to assign two of us here into a room, actually. So are you not supposed to be joining a particular group? Um, yeah, no, Andrew is going to, Andrew and Jeremy are in charge of my group. So I'm going oh. to be moving right. Yeah. So I'll just leave you with this group anyway. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Is, um, are you? Yes. Are you going to go, yeah? Yes, I'm going to go now, yeah. So, um, I suppose, I think, is there a reason we've not been able to assign everybody? Um, um, oh, I can't just assign, so um, it, it doesn't allow me to assign us to a room. So, I can assign you to a room, but this group would have been left without anybody to moderate. That's fine, that's okay, I'm, I'm happy to stay. So, yeah, um, so I don't know why that has happened, but for some reasons I can just assign us to a room. Yeah. Like what what did you all choose? It'll be good to know what, what you were hoping to, to meet up with. So Hash, you, what group were you hoping to join? Oh, I didn't choose a group. Are we meant to choose a group? Um, well, okay, I, th I thought people chose um, groups that they wanted to be part of. So Not everybody did. Yeah. Is in the registration. I think the registration I chose the uh, guy. Yeah. Oh, did yeah. you? So yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, yep. how, how is everybody? Yeah, I'm good. How are you? I'm okay. I'm all right. Yeah. Get, getting into the descent of the year, so uh, ready to have a break. Um, but yeah, so how's things going business-wise? Yeah, business-wise is still the same because nothing's opened up and I really need like my business, that social media booking app, I don't know if you remember. Yeah. Yeah, so 
I'm assistant teacher now, so I'm hoping to get some teaching um, jobs to the agency next week. And then I'm just going to go to like their booking departments and like speak to them and like how custom discovery. And so it kind of worked out as in just becoming an assistant teacher through like the, the next COVID months until like February. And I'll just go to all these different schools and uh, become like a cover teacher, assistant teacher. And during the breaks, I'll just go to like, like who runs the bookings and just talk them my bit of custom discovery. Right, okay. No, that's good. Um, I did speak to um, uh, Elle about you. So she, we will mm. pick up on that contact we discussed. Um, so, yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, thank you. So, yeah. Is it Trisha? Trisha? Yes, it is. Yes. yes. Trisha. Hi. Um, good, 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 good to meet you. Um, I, I, I'd come uh, a long while ago uh, to one of your cake give Friday cake events, and I've been in touch with Tobias since. So um, it, it, it's good to come to, to one of your virtual events as well. Um, I, I've just come out more out of interest to, to, to see what you're doing now. Because uh, I'd really, really like what you did before. Um, I'm a business coach, so essentially I help other businesses. Um, and I do help a few businesses with innovation, um, mainly because of what I, I'm, I, before I became a coach, I used to be a, a finance director. So my, um, um, my chartered body is the ACCA, and I'm known for all the sustainability because I, I just love the environment and sustainability so it was lovely hearing about water and 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 the other environmental things that that was being discussed so um and as an accountant there's plenty that I meet up with who come who have who have an idea but then they don't know where to go and as a coach I can coach them but quite often they they need a link with with, with, with the university or 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 a set of academics that help can help them move to the next stage. Sometimes just being commercial is not enough. And and so I, I just wanted to attend, see what you do, and see who I can put in touch with you, really. Yeah. And and I think often it's just where the university is sometimes, and I think this is probably not just Leicester, but any university, it's mm. not always easy to know who you should be speaking with. Um, and and so it's kind of one of the things for having this is that hopefully we can put that you know put you in touch with who you need to be speaking with um, and, and certainly one of the things that we do is if we can't help we say we can't help and we do pass pass that on um, in terms of what that is so um, so if you have got, you know, obviously businesses that are, um, you know, working on some ideas and projects and various things, then um, if it's our area of expertise, then, you know, certainly we'll gladly have that conversation. Uh, thank you. And yes, I, I'm, I'm in touch with, with, with as, as I said, Tobias, but it's nice to meet you and Anju and... Uh, and um, you know, listen to what Ella had to say. So um, it, I think I'd like to come to a few more and just, mm -hmm. just to hear what's going on. Uh, a lot of the people that I meet up with, as I said, is more environment than space. Uh, building physics is, is a key thing because obviously 40% of greenhouse gases are from buildings. Mm -hmm. so, so to work with, there's a lot of people I work with in that arena. Um, so it's it's just it's just people I meet and it's all very random. So I don't know if you're aware of the work that the because we've got a piece of work that we do with um, social our social impact team around sustainability audits. Now that would interest me very much. So yes. Um, and so we've got um, so Asha she is actually hosting one of the breakout sessions. Um, I, I don't know if you've popped into that one, um, but um, we are doing a big piece of work also in collaboration with um, De Montfort University, both City and County Council, because both of them obviously have um, announced their climate action reports. Um, well, the county are yet to do theirs yet. Um, and so, and obviously 
the university is very much at the heart of wanting to work with the smart cities um, that was posted in the chat. Um, so we would very much like um, to be engaging with people who are interested in those areas. Um, and so we've got a range of different services, a range of different um, products that are supporting people around um, Net Zero. Mm -hmm. Okay, that um, all right. Well, what, what I'll do is um, I'll, I'll I'll stay in touch. Obviously, I will stay in touch, but I don't want to take over the conversation as no, I see. No, it's okay. It's it's, it's all. It, uh, this is what what it's all about is having a chance. Because if we were in the in the kitchen there in the innovation hub, we'd be standing together with our coffee and cake in hand and um, chatting about everything. So okay. it's the whole idea. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 yeah, it's a different world. It's a great, it, you know, it, it's going to make changes throughout, I think. But yeah, it's it, it's interesting. Uh, I, I've spoken to people from all over the world as a result of this, which I wouldn't have done before. So uh, um, hopefully there's things, uh, connections I can bring to the university because I'd rather things came to my, my local university than went somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and I mean, really, I, I think it's true. There's there's going to be, there's been downside to not having that physical face to face. But like you say, um, we've been able to do things. I mean, um, one of the speakers today, she she was um, phoning in from, um, uh, is it Ethiopia? So they, they, you know, there's there's um, real possibilities of uh, doing so much more. And I think we're all getting used to. Um, using this kind of digital technology, which is great. Cameron, you've joined us. Uh, yeah, I, I accidentally I was in, I was in Tobias's room, and I yeah. somehow I somehow dropped out of it. I've ended up in yours basically. Oh, but I think I think that was sort of a, a you know a sort of a strategy. I don't know. Maybe oh, maybe I wanted to get away from, away from Tobias. Right. Yeah. Did you yeah. want to go back? I, I don't mind, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just wonder if there might be some people in there as well that uh, might be, because um, he was going to be talking about. Pivoting. I don't know how I made the transfer, so don't ask me to go back now. No, no. Yeah. Well, I think Ayo's the he's the hand of God. Um, yeah. If, so... I, if Ayo wants to put me back, he's more than well welcome to. Yeah. <laughs> I think he's got the he has the power. Yeah. Uh, the rest of us don't have that same power. Ayo, are you there? <laughs> he is. He's having a cup of tea. He must be. He must have. Yeah. Maybe having a, a, a break, comfort break. Yeah. I could probably play with it myself anyway. I'm not sure how you do it because we've got somebody else join us now. Yeah, I've just noticed that. Welcome, Rebecca. I don't think she can hear. Can you hear Rebecca? Oh, she's saying hi on the chat. Oh, so. okay. Hi. Uh, are you are you not enabled with the sound? Okay. Fair enough. Well, you can listen to us. Yeah, I, I've got to say, I do miss those, uh, you know, in, in the kitchen where you used to go and go into the kitchen and just have a, a bit of a chat and all that sort of stuff and, and a smosa and a, and a coffee. Yeah, OK. Uh, I'm really hungry now, the smosa, yeah. the smell of it. It's, a, you know, um, the funny thing is, as soon as it arrived, you knew everybody's attention had um, shifted. Um, so, yeah. Um, I was told yesterday, though, by my son that I can't have a second freezer mm. because I will be storing smoothie in there. So, yeah. So, you can't have a second freezer? No, because I'll be storing smoothies in there. Oh, yeah. right. <laughs> uh, there's so many places you can just go and get them from, from, you know, from the corner shop nowadays and things like that in Leicester. No. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So how how is um 
things going up to the end of Christmas now for you? I think, I think we're about to see some big transformations, yeah, okay, um, personally, yeah, uh, within uh, um, the sort of Innovate UK, some of the new calls that will be coming out and things like that. I know there's some stuff that's happening in, uh, K in terms of KTP because you'll be aware KTPs have always been one to three years and stuff like that, yeah, okay. Um, it was announced yesterday, uh, we don't know what the strategy is, but it's the the th we don't know what the delivery is, but the strategy is mini KTPs. Yeah. OK, so, you know, the same way that you do sort of e e ERDF funded type mini projects. Yeah. OK, so uh, Richard Land, the programme director, announced yesterday that actually what we want to do is formulate a sort of a mini KTP that lasts about four months where the university, there's a, a there's a genuine need for knowledge exchange between the university and the company. The same methodology, which is getting an associate or recent student a graduate basically but instead of having a graduate that's like unknown to the university it's got to be a graduate that's known to the university yeah okay so i think we had prof levacy on the call before basically so it's like if if he's dealing with a company and it's about ai and and sort of data science and things like that then uh, it's a case of okay we've got a company here they may want to do a bit of um you know sort of a uh, a testing application or something like that yeah okay proof of concept you know that sort of stuff yeah okay and uh, they still need that same you know that they still need that that body that person to come and do it for them to continue the momentum basically so it's like that but instead of it being a long drawn out three-year project it's a quick win four months and possibly lead into a ktp basically yeah okay so that's something that's on the radar i, th I think it'll be next year before we hear any details but it's on the radar That'll yeah. be amazing, Cameron, though, I think. Yeah. I think it'll just absolutely um, enable so much more. Yeah. So I think um, because, I mean, I, I don't need to tell you this, but certainly the, the yeah, um, know. Yeah. you know, the projects that you know just need that little bit to yeah. move them over into where yeah. they need to be. Um, so yeah, that that's absolutely. Uh, I think very much. Um, I, I, think, I think interestingly, it will rely more on the academic, or I their contacts. Yeah, okay, and more importantly, that they've already internally identified a student that has got the caliber of student that can deliver on it. And I think that's that's what's missing from the KTP mechanism because you know it's the quality of the student that delivers. And that's un, uh, unknown until it comes through to interview and things like that. And it can take a year to get that student on board. This is a quick fix. I've got a student here, possibly a researcher or something like that, something that's known to the to the mm -hmm. academic team, basically. And we know that they can deliver this under the academic supervision, basically. Yeah. yeah? But, so that yeah. would be interesting. That I think will... also as well from the student's perspective, it's what an amazing opportunity um to actually be able to get that kind of experience because we know the marketplace is going to be you know troubled yeah uh, in terms of the job market so Absolutely. so so again that's that's going to be like a a really great way to do that isn't it yeah um Absolutely. so it's really good asha you've gone off camera but i was going to um, introduce you to trisha hi so you, you might want to just tell each other what you do. Yeah, I'm, I'll go first. Um, I'm the Social Innovation Officer here at the Innovation Hub, um, and I lead on um, providing sustainability support for um, SMEs in Leicester and Leicestershire. Um, so at the moment, we offer the free sustainability audit um, to help you understand where you are in your sustainability journey and what things you might need to do um, to become a more sustainable business and embed sustainability within your practices um, and also just highlight what what can be you know what can be done and the services available that you can access um, so that's a little bit about me oh th thanks Asha that, that's nice to know um, I'm Trusha Trusha Lakani um, I'm, I'm a business coach and before that I, I worked as, as, as a as a FD. So um, I do a lot within my um, 
within my chartered association. Um, I, I was president of the Leicestershire ACCA network for, for four years. So I stepped down in February, luckily. So I feel sorry for the president currently because he's took over during COVID. So, <laughs> but um, uh, but I've been I've been with I've been doing a lot inside the association for a lot, and it's I volunteer my time, and it's it's the environment and sustainability, which is something I found I've got a passion for. So um, and so anything to do with sustainability, the ACCA sort of pushed me into that, even if it's got nothing to do with accounts. Um, so <laughs> so um, and I've been. Again, a lot, a lot at the minute that's coming to me is from the building sector, just because of the contacts I've got there. And sometimes mm -hmm. I think it comes in fits and spurts. So knowing what you're doing is really, really interesting, just because as a coach, I meet so many businesses and I try and push the sustainability thing because it's for me, it's going concern. And um, and also it saves them costs when they do things right. And it it's exactly. it, it like the ethics as a whole whole raft of things. Mm -hmm. for the business. And so knowing that you're there when, when Rajinda mentioned you, I thought, oh, that that's brilliant. So I think I'd love to arrange, um, you know, a one to one with you and, 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 and have a deeper conversation, if you don't mind. Yeah, that would be great. I'd be happy to help. And I think that's the important bit about sustainability. That word is thrown around quite a lot. But when when we talk about sustainability, it's not just the environment. It's considering the social side of things and the economic side of things. Um, mm. And the work we do um, tries to encompass that in a more holistic way rather than pigeonholing individual things that, you know, businesses can can do or change. Um, so, yeah, I'd be, I'd be happy to pick up with you. OK, we will do that. So what's the best way to get in touch, Asha? I will put my email in the chat now. Um, okay. And if you just drop me an email, we can organise um, a one-to-one. -one. Okay. Good. Um, I was just going to say, John, John, are you on the line? John Drake? Is he joined us? Hold. I think he might be on hold, or in a, it might be mean in a breakout room. Okay. Right. Okay. Because he looked like he was there because I was going to be introducing to um, Hash. So L, I was talking earlier to Hash um, and I think I mentioned to you about him connecting with um, careers and enterprise team. So was just wanting to maybe pick up that we make that link for him. So yeah, yeah. We'll do that next week. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, I, think, I think we're catching up next week, aren't we Hash? Yes, we are. <laughs> when are you speaking, the two of you? Uh, we've got a call with Sean on Monday, isn't it? Monday morning. Okay. Yeah. All right, then. So if you're doing that, then you, we can perhaps, me and you, when we chat later on yeah. today, we can pick that up. Yeah, definitely. How, how are you doing, Harsh? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? Yeah, not bad, thanks. Not bad. I've just got a little runny nose, that's about it. <laughs> I swear you always have a runny nose. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I think it's just me being not in the gym, not being yeah. active. It's yeah, being staying not... at home. It's not. It's everything's like going. I'm like degrading. Yeah. <laughs> Stay at home. I had a sore yeah, throat spell last it. night, and I was thinking, oh no, oh no, <laughs> <laughs> this isn't it. Is it? <laughs> yeah. Uh, on Wednesday, I'm gonna be the first one in the gym, six a.m. Watch. <laughs> <laughs> are they gonna be? Are they open the gyms? I've lost track. Yeah. Yeah. All tiers. I'm like, yes, I don't care if you're tier three now, as, as long as gym's open. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah I think, uh, I'll I think... you, um, tell you that um, I got an assistant teaching job with the agency. So I get oh, yeah? to like, pick what days I want to work and they'll just give me like different schools for like cover teacher and stuff. So when that happens, I'll just, <clears throat> I'll just do my job. And then in the break, I'll go to like people that are doing the bookings and just have a conversation with them. Yeah. But yeah. I do. That's great. So, well yeah. Done. So hopefully, that hopefully I, they take me some to schools next week, and I'll just try and do that. Sure. Harsh, can, can I ask what what do you do exactly? Oh, as a I'm a recent graduate from uh, University of Leicester, and I've done a startup during this lockdown, and mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's like a 
basically it was a personal problem of mine, which when I used to play five aside football, I used to I used to be the host and I used to be huckling around with the availabilities from the pitches, the companies and also my friends. Mm-hmm. So I'm th- so I'm like, why is nothing like group booking payments have occurred? Like uh, any group bookings are, are right now is when the payments made and then people like have a, like a chat and then they divide the money. But what this is, is an application where you make a group chat like WhatsApp and it's connected to the company and it shows the availabilities. You pick on a polling and you pay before you make the payment, before you book. Wow. wow. And it also, yeah, and it also works with local schools because local schools are not online and local schools have like loads of like badmintons, cricket and sports schools and stuff like that. So that's my idea right now. And the, the MVP is done. We just need the companies and more customer discovery. Okay. All right. So thank you, everyone. I think uh, the, the breakout rooms have reconvened now into a single room. So I'll hand over back to Rajinda. Hi, everyone. Um, yeah, so I suppose really I'm, I'm coming in to kind of really close proceedings, but also to do a huge thank you um, to everybody. Um, so I want you to thank you really to um, joining us this morning, to all our people that have joined, um, businesses, um, academic staff, students, to everybody who has um, come to um, the session. And I really want to thank the business partners who um, have um, shared their stories with us today. Um, a really around innovation, working together, and then also um, developing um, new projects and the funding that they've brought into play to make that happen. Um, and you know, obviously, we all know um, that this has been um, a challenging year. And so for us, um, it's a huge thank you as well to all our business partners and colleagues that we've worked with throughout the year. So, you know, we're very, very much about um, helping, you know, new ideas, helping um, uh, develop great projects. And it is, it is, we can only do that if we're working together. Um, so the other people really for me to thank is so my colleagues, um, one of the things I have to say is that, uh, and this is all colleagues um, that we've been working with, to say that they're superstars, they've been motoring, are optimistic, forward looking, and have just been so collegiate and great colleagues supporting one another. So for us closing out this year, um, you know, I think there's been highs and lows We've, we've had lots of challenges alongside everybody else um, dealing with various things. And what I would say is that people have come together and wanted to really support one another. And, and that kind of really has been hugely encouraging. So what I wanted to say was really from the Innovation Hub team, our good wishes for the coming season and really working with you now until the end of the year and very much um, for the new year, really thinking about hope, recovery, renewed ambition and really better times um, for us all. Um, certainly for the coming year, what one of the things that we will be looking at is how we can make things more accessible, easy for everybody um, and uh, a range of different events so that we do um, uh, are able to continue Innovation Fridays because we know how these help people to um, develop and make new connections. And so, all I can really say is wishing you all very um, a, a good time ahead for the time we get a break. Um, our warm wishes: stay safe, um, stay well, and um, and do get in touch with us if we can help. Um, I think that's really close proceedings today. Thank you.